You've probably seen it on the news that there is a city killer asteroid with a chance of hitting Earth in the next few years. This is obviously a very scary headline, but how accurate is it and should we really be worried? I decided to reach out to our favorite astronomer, Jonathan McDowell, for the real scoop. The sensational headline has been a version of the movie Don't Look Up. Apparently we have a, what, 2.5? 6% chance now of this asteroid hitting Earth in a few years? That's right. I mean, let me be clear. You know, you know, it's either 100% or a zero, right, in reality. 2.6% is like our uncertainty. You know, it, it, it's we don't know how close the asteroid is going to come, right, because we can't measure its motion accurately enough. As we get better and better observations, probably that 2.6% will shrink to zero. As the observations get more accurate, probably we'll be able to come back to you and go, okay, panic over, it's not gonna hit us. But there's still that 2.6% chance that we'll be coming back to you and go, uh, guys, actually it looks like it's really gonna hit, which would be bad. It wouldn't be extinction of the dinosaurs bad. This is not a big enough asteroid to like wipe out all, all life on Earth. So it's not a don't look up scenario in that sense, hmm. but it would be enough to take out a, a, a significant region, a city and, and surrounding region. Um, so you might end up having to you know, evacuate some major city or something like that. But I think it's a testament to the, the work that astronomers have done in the past 20 years in improving asteroid warning that, you know, we have picked this thing up good and early, you know, and so well before 2032, we should have a confident understanding of whether it's going to hit or not. I think it's a wake up call that these things can happen. Like how much warning do we typically get for this kind of thing? Would there ever be a scenario where it's just like, you know, within a year warning or is it you within a few days even? Uh, yeah, I mean, if the thing comes out of the sun, if you haven't discovered it before, the, the worst thing are, are comets, because comets come in on a big, long orbit from, you know, 100,000 years since the last time it went past, right? And they come in really fast. And if it comes out of you from the wrong direction where it's uh, coming in the daytime and you can't see it with telescopes until it's really close, you might have almost no warning at all. Uh, but for asteroids, they're whizzing around the sun like the Earth is. And um, so this one is interesting because it's got, it takes four years, almost exactly four years to go around the sun. And so it's kind of synced up with the Earth. The Earth goes around the sun four times. Every four years, the asteroid comes into where the Earth is and then goes out again past the orbit of Mars, four years later back into the Earth. Each time it passes, if it passes close to the Earth the first time, it's going to be close to the Earth the second time as well. So that's an unusual case, but but uh, in general, you can have it so that, you know, if you're unlucky and each time the asteroid comes close to the Earth, it's sort of coming at you from the daytime direction, you, your telescopes may not pick it up. So Jonathan says that one thing that we could be investing more money in is having more telescopes so that we can monitor these threats more accurately. We need a fleet of telescopes really uh, scattered around the solar system, scattered around the Earth's orbit, to sort of pick up all these small rocks that we're, we're missing right now. We, we, we really made a lot of progress in, in catching a lot of the bigger rocks that we didn't used to know exist, and now we're, we're monitoring them and tracking them. So we got a much better chance than we used to of getting advance warning. When was the last time that we had sort of a, you know, panicking headline like this one? Well, there was an asteroid called Apophis and that one, it wasn't as high a probability. Uh, it was predicted to come close to Earth actually in 2029. Now, you know, we got better observations and now we know, no, okay, it's not going to hit us in 2029. It's not going to hit us in 2036. 100 years out, it may still be a risk. And so, you know, that, that's sort of how it goes, is that you, you pick these things up. You're not quite sure of the orbit. You go, oh, it's coming pretty close to that in, in 10 years' time. And then you spend a lot of effort to refine the orbit, may, measure it more accurately, and, and then go, okay, phew, it's close, but it's not that close. And this one is called, what, YR24? Right now, yeah, it's just got a provisional designation, 2024 YR4. Is the name. What does that stand for? So that is 2024 is the year it was picked up. The YR4 is just a sequence number that encodes like which week it was discovered and what how many asteroids it was like the you know the 300th asteroid to be discovered that week or whatever. And so so then it gets 
that gets encoded into this string. And when the orbit is better known, it will get what's called a permanent number. For example, Apophis, which, uh, um, uh, let me find it, it's, it's, uh, it, is, um, it had a, one of these designations, uh, 2004 MN4. And then when we knew its orbit better, it got a proper number. It was asteroid number 99942. And then once it's got a number, it can also get a name. And so they give it a name just to make it, you know, easier to refer to. And that's how it, so so this one will will get a name eventually. It doesn't have one yet. It was discovered by the Atlas system in Chile in December. A lot of different people followed it up as soon as it was found. Right. Uh, and in particular, the uh, the Minor Planet Center here at the Center for Astrophysics uh, is is the body that kind of collates a lot of the observations and goes puts it on the confirmation page. And goes, oh, this one's coming close to Earth. We should look at it some more, and persuades everyone else to look at it. And so there's a, this network of astronomers around the world. Um, and so this is mostly ground based astronomy, right? That's doing this. It's not. Hubble, it's not uh, James Webb, it's it's the regular old ground-based telescopes that are scanning the skies every night and and warning us of, of threats to the Earth. Yeah, it's Jennifer Lawrence and Leonardo DiCaprio, right? <laughs> exactly right, yeah. <laughs> now, of course, this asteroid isn't nearly as big as the dinosaur killer, but it is fairly large, probably comparable to the size of a large plane. As it stands, the probability of impact is at 2.6%, but this number has been changing every day and still could go up or down as we get more accurate measurements. The YR4 asteroid is currently the most dangerous space object near Earth, according to NASA. But here's what is concerning. If it were to hit Earth, its impact on the planet would have the same power as a nuclear bomb. So what exactly exactly could we do if this gets more and more likely? We could of course plan for a large scale evacuation. And with the deflection technology that we have being so rudimentary, that would probably take place either way. So what is our plan and technology currently for deflecting an asteroid? What is the best strategy? Because there's obviously the idea that you could just evacuate the area, although I would I would reckon some people would stay because people do that in hurricanes and stuff. Um, but I think there's also this idea of, could we deflect it? Could we, could we stop it? For YR4, I think it's tough to justify that level of, of deflection if you could just get away with evacuating. Um, but it'd be good practice for a case which was, you know, if you had a bigger asteroid that would wipe out, say, a whole country, right? then then you definitely would want to deflect it. And so I think this is a great opportunity for us to practice the asteroid deflection technology. Uh, and so there was a an experiment that was done a couple of years ago, the DART mission that smashed into a tiny, tiny little asteroid and changed its trajectory by a tiny, tiny amount. Uh, and that just to prove the concept. Mm. But you know, you'd have to scale that up enormously to get an asteroid of YR4 size and move it by an amount enough to change from a hit to a miss. So the engineering involved is really a significant step forward. And it might be worth investing in doing that just so that we've got a demonstrated capability to actually do it for the time when we really, really need it. But certainly this is an active area of research. The, the Right now, the Europeans have a space probe called Hera which is on its way to that other asteroid, the Didymos system that we smashed into to go, okay, two years later, what does the smashed asteroid look like? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and how much damage did we actually do to it and so on? And, and so I think that that's, you know, these are important experiments so that we understand, you know, how, what asteroids are made of, what happens when you hit them. There's an idea that some of these asteroids are just basically like ball pits, you know, that they have they're lots of little pebbles held together, only just held together by gravity. And so if you smash into them, the balls fly apart and then come back together again and you haven't really achieved anything. So we, we need to do these sorts of experiments to understand what it would really take to deflect an asteroid and, and what the best way is to do it. Um, uh, so there are a couple other ideas is what's called the gravity tractor where basically you put a massive, another little asteroid near it to tug on it with gravity. Cool thing about that is it doesn't matter if the thing is a bull pit, it just, you know, it'll all move along with it. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, that's very hard to do too. Now, if this asteroid collided with Earth, scientists estimate that it would release energy equivalent to that of a nuclear bomb, causing significant destruction within a 30 mile radius. You know, maybe you can nuke it and, and use the nuke as a rocket to kind of, you know, push it off course. Might not work, might, might, uh, uh, might just, you know, it all flies apart and then comes back together again without really having changed direction. So we're, 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 we're still understanding how to do this in a reliable way. So, so are you saying that the DART mission is like the furthest that we've gotten to actually like even trying to deflect an asteroid like it's Absolutely. all yeah and it deflect you know it changed its speed by like a millimeter a second or something like that it, it was a very small speed change but measurable they did a very clever experiment to be able to measure that tiny change and we learned a lot from it we learned a lot about the squishiness of the asteroid uh about how to build a mission like that how to target it but but still it's not it's not nearly what will happen with that is not nearly beefy enough to save the earth if, if needed. So, you know, it's a step, but it's a baby step. Yeah, it doesn't sound like we have really, I mean, we have some ideas and a, a little mini, you know, proof of concept. Is that is that all we have in our back pocket? At the moment, yeah. At, <laughs> at the moment that we, we do not have Bruce Willis sitting on an A-bomb ready to go. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we have nothing operational that that could be sent out to to deflect an asteroid and and uh, we have ideas so don't knock ideas it's better than nothing uh because we still have time uh even for the 2020 uh 2032 encounter if we need it you know six years yeah okay that's pretty tight to put a space mission together but uh you know maybe you could do a small experiment to to deflect it a little you want to be careful i mean one of the things with the dart mission was we deliberately picked an asteroid that wasn't going anywhere near earth Right. So that if we deflected it a little, you know, we wouldn't accidentally deflect it toward Earth. And so at this point, it's still kind of an unknown where exactly, if this were to happen, where it would hit. Absolutely. The, there's, um, you know, a, an error bar, a, a swath around the uh, uh, the p potential places it could hit. But it's so uncertain right now. It's not really useful to talk about, I think. Yeah, right, I, right. I think I think we, we need observations over a long period of time. The longer arc you have, the longer between the first observation and the last observation, the more you can tie down its orbit, mm. the narrower you can make your prediction about what it's going to do. Right. Uh, and so I think a year or two from now, we'll have a much better idea uh, of, you know, should we be scared? And if we should be scared, where should we be scared? When was the last time, like, is this the most concerning probability or percentage that you've seen? I think it is. Yeah, I think this is the first time we've had something with this high a probability uh, for a, and this big an asteroid. We have had ones with much higher probability that are smaller, that have actually hit, right? And so notably a few years ago over Chelyabinsk, there was an asteroid that came in and exploded in the air over the Russian city of Chelyabinsk, you know, like a, multi megaton equivalent nuclear explosion kind of force right and it blew out windows throughout the city and fortunately no one was killed but it was a it was a close miss uh and then back in 1907 i think or so thereabouts um there was the famous tunguska event again in russia uh in siberia where a fairly big we think piece of a comet came in and, and blew up and flattened 100 square miles of forest. Uh, um, and so so these things, you know, if that had come down over a city, there would have been significant casualties. Mm -hmm. uh, and and so these things do happen now and again. And and so it's just a question, you know, lots of little ones, a few bigger ones, and then the rarer, really big ones like these, this city buster one. You know, we can build up our practice on the smaller ones right uh, you know that come in more frequently but the city busters are are probably probably like one in a hundred years or something like that to actually hit the trouble is that compared to 100 years ago a lot more of the earth is now covered with cities and you know it would really be like a bigger than a nuclear attack right 
Uh, and of course, that raises the worry. If you're not tracking these things as you come in, if it happens unexpectedly, someone thinks it is a nuclear attack and retaliates, you know, against perceived enemy or something like that, right? So right. it's really, even for that reason, it's really important to be tracking these things and understanding what's happening. But you really want to evacuate if you have something that as big as YR4 coming in, you do not want to be in its path. Uh, and so, again, like I said, hopefully. Most likely, right, a, a 2%, two percent, two and a bit percent chance of it hitting the earth means there's a 97 and a bit percent chance that it won't, right? So, 97 percent confident that there's nothing to worry about. Still, two and a bit percent that's that's enough to kind of make you pay attention, I think. And uh, and so, we're definitely going to be uh, uh, paying really close attention to to. Uh, getting the uncertainties down, finding out with it, whether this thing is really gonna gonna hit us or not. But do you think like the most likely scenario, if it was to progress, is that we'd have to evacuate? We wouldn't necessarily have like a solution for deflection in time. I think it's really hard to to ha imagine that we'd have confidence in yeah. a solution that we cobbled together that quickly. May maybe we'll try something, right? But I don't. I think on that sort of you know five year time scale kind of thing any solution we put together would be sort of a long shot and you'd want to evacuate anyway i keep seeing this you know the the percentage is raising and a lot of people are talking about it so i'm like is this fear mongering or is this something where it's like oh you know we should be worried yeah i mean i don't think the average person should be worried yet like i said 97 percent not a problem, right? So we've got more immediate things to worry about. Um, but I think the scientific community needs to take it very seriously and be ready. You know, I think let's not raise the panic level right now, okay? Let's wait until we have a better orbit. Fund us to do the measurements, right? Don't cut the budget of the agencies that are trying to, to do these measurements, please, right? And, and, uh, Fund us to do the measurements to, to find out whether that 2.6% is going to go down or up, right? right. And, and then if it turns out, the unlikely event, but possible event that, yeah, as we get more measurements, it rises from 2.6% to 50%, 70%, 90%, you know, then that, you know, if it gets up to like 30%, that's when I think I want to you know, make the public alerted and, and go, okay, we seriously got to prepare uh, um, for that. But as that probability goes up, if it does, the precision on where on the earth it might hit will also uh, start to improve. Right. And so we may start to get, okay, and it's this part of the world, or it'll probably be like, it's on a, it'll be, we don't know where it's on, somewhere on a track across these three continents and these other two continents don't have to worry. It's going to be, you know, it's not going to be better than that. Right. But, but still, uh, and it will, you know, as, as it gets closer, we'll refine it. And, and, you know, pro a year from impact, you would know for sure uh, to within a fairly small region. And that's pro a year is probably enough time to organize a city evacuations. And right now the projected date for impact would be December 22nd, 2032 at approximately 2 p.m. UTC. So for right now, it's probably safe to leave the concern to astronomers, but this is an interesting headline and something that I'm sure many of you were curious to learn more about. So hopefully you've learned something from this video. If you liked it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.